See you later. Hey everyone, Nick Apicella from Resonic Sound Solutions here with another competitor spotlight. So, tell us who you are and what you got here. Uh, my name's Scott Smith. I'm from Montgomery, Alabama. I have a 14 Silverado uh, with some Audio Frog, some Helix, and some Demore Engineering amps. Cool. So it looks like you have a little presentation here. Is this just for spectator use or for you know install judging? Uh, part of the rule package that we need to be open and transparent what we have for spectators. Okay. I see you also had a little book over there. Um, you know, I was looking at it before. It looks like you did a very meticulous job on the install. Let's, uh, why don't we hop in and we'll, we'll okay. start discussing your car. All right. So, how did you get into this? Well, uh, I, I worked uh, part-time for for a uh, installer back in the 80s to finance my own system. Okay. Um, I never competed, but I figured out, and they figured out early that I had an ear, and I did some uh, sound quality judging and ended up getting invited to, to uh, judge the masters in 92 and 93. Um, Pretty much didn't do much after that. I think the last aftermarket system I had was in 92. Um, so it's been a while. It's 31 years now, right? Yeah. And yeah. back in November or December, I wanted to buy a new truck, and I couldn't find anything I liked. I said, screw it. I'm going to keep my existing truck. And I just wanted CarPlay. And, and here we are. CarPlay. What yeah. else did you get? <laughs> yeah. Well, I had a Bose system, so everything had to be ripped and replaced Yeah. Uh, in this year model. So, so we started with a Stinger radio. Um, it looks like you have the kit for it, too, that blends yep. it in really. That looks really clean. Yeah. Cool. Um, and what, is that, what does that go to from there? So we go optical out of the Stinger radio into a Helix uh, Ultra. Okay. I see you got the director for it yep. right here. Got the director. This is controlling. What are you using this to control? In Simply your for presets, and it is nice to see what the what the voltage is. Okay. Um, but yeah, just to call it reset presets, we have uh, we have the USB interface in it to do the high res stuff, but I don't see the improvement in quality. For the sacrifice of convenience yeah. i like my steering wheel controls my car play i actually agree you know in my car i use the factory radio into mm -hmm. a optical interface you know i grab the most 150 signal i same thing for me factory you know screen or aftermarket screen it's so much more convenient than right you know well it's a daily driver yeah you know? whether the benefits there or not i don't know i i personally haven't even bothered to really find out in my personal car because it's just way too convenient um, i listened to it maybe twice and i was like this is cool i really don't hear much of a difference and i'm in and out of my truck all day and i needed the convenience to just be able to plug in my phone and go yeah so. i get you so uh what do you got going on up here i see you have a tweeter in the sail panel and it looks like maybe that you rewrap the dash grill up here that's correct okay so what do you got going on up here uh so it's a uh audio frog three-way system there's a gb60 in the door uh a gb25 in the corner of the dash and a gb10 in the sail post okay um, and any reason um you know keeping it factory are you are you you know going for a factory looking system or is that just what you ended up doing yeah we wanted to keep it as stealthy as possible okay multiple reasons one reason is so people doing window shopping will not be attracted <laughs> to it yeah um, but yeah, I, I just kind of like the stealth look. Okay. Yeah. And it looks like you did a really good job making it look factory. You know, I noticed in your install book, you know, you texture coded them and it looks factory. You blacked out the chrome ring. Yep. Um, yeah, you color match. I don't know how you did such a good job, you know, on video on my screen here, I noticed it looks pretty drastic, but in person, the color just flows really well. Like there's a lot of different browns and it looks like a really good match. In yeah, we found, we found the, the OEM dash insert color code mm. and, and mixed that uh, paint really, really thin mm -hmm. and used it like a dye on the, on the grill cloth. Oh, is that And then brushed that? it. 
Okay. Brushed it once it was dry to, to brush that residue off. Okay. And it came out pretty good. Cool. And then I, I heard you talking before. What else do you have in here? Uh, so out of the Helix into four Demore Engineering amps, there is a 1001 on a um, JLTW3 underneath the back seat. Um, there is a Demore 750 uh, one on a 10 inch JL in the console for mid base. So it's in here. Yeah, it's a, the JL stealth box. Uh, oh, is that what I'm touching right here? No, is this, you no, can't. no, it's it's underneath completely. Yeah, it oh, literally wow. is isolated from this. Okay. Um, and uh, then there's a uh, Demore uh, 704. That half is on the front GB60s, and the other half is on the rear fill and the rear doors. Those are uh, uh, JBL coaxials in the back because they're okay. only for rear fill, and we had them sitting on the shelf collecting yeah. dust. So. Yeah. Uh, the 404 is for the for the tweets in the mid range. Okay. So let me ask you this. Um, was this a one and done type of install or was it over time, small upgrades, stuff like that? So we started this install in April, uh, working just Saturdays and Sundays on it. Okay. Um, we uh, competed for the first time in Clearwater. That would have been mid-August. Mm -hmm. We learned from that and came back and made some changes. Um, all right, so let me ask you this then: what um, what kind of changes or what kind of you know aha moments have you had with this install that took it to the next level? So we we learned uh, a lot about the positioning of drivers, uh, tuning. Uh, I invested in a tuning rig to be able to to tune and going through that learning curve. To be honest with you, I learned more at this event than I've learned the whole time. Here at finals. Yeah, there's so many smart people walking around here. What's uh, uh, what's one piece of advice that someone gave you that, that sticks out to you? Um, dash ref uh, glass reflection and uh, mid-range placement to the glass. What about it? Uh, that's some that's some it's top secret stuff. Okay. Uh, right. So. Uh, the closer you can get the mid-range driver to the windshield, the higher the reflection frequency null is. Yep. Um, and I was dealing with one at about 2,000. Yep, that's so, very common in dash locations. So my crossover point is 2,500, so I'm going to work to get that closer to the windshield to raise that number to be out of that. So you're going to kind of raise up the mid-range to be closer to the glass so that reflection... We're going to remount them under that grill and get them closer to oh, the Oh, so you're going to still keep it under the grill? Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot the goal is, you know, completely stock looking, no window shoppers allowed. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Um, last question. Any advice to anyone watching this video that might be interested in competing or coming to one of these events to spectate, you know, what do you, what do you think? Um, since there are a lot of events have three organizations, um, read the rules and, uh, try to try to mold your system uh, around a lower class to where you don't jump straight from the frying pan into the fire. I do notice, that's actually a good point, because I notice a lot of people that are really into car audio, but having competed, end up having crazy installs that aren't crazy for the sake of being crazy. They're just, that's just how they built it. Mm -hmm. And it ends up putting them in a pretty high class and that's, it just doesn't make sense other than the fact that they did one very specific thing that jumps them up like two or three classes. Yeah, there's a competitor here that has a four inch on the A-post and that pushed him up three classes. Yeah, um, and then the rest of the system is relatively simple probably, right? right, right? right. Yeah. So or I, 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 once we made a decision to compete, I molded this around the novice class. Okay. And then once I... Novice for Iaska, right? Novice for Iaska and OEM... For e, Emma? Uh, uh, 
Yeah, O E M E for Emma. Okay. Um, and then, of course, uh, Mass Q, I get lumped in with about three IASCA classes. Okay. But, um, yeah, I'm going to compete in, in novice and, until uh, a year, and then I'll graduate to amateur. Cool. All right. Um, any any thank yous to anyone that's helped you along the way? Obviously, uh, Andy Otwell. Uh, we did this entire system in his driveway. <laughs> cool. Um, you guys did a great job on it. Well, we appreciate it. Yeah. Anything else? Any last words? Mm, no. That's about it. All right. Cool. Well, good luck to you this weekend, and... Uh, you know, hope to see you out there again. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so Scott here is gonna show me the amp rack that he did back here. So let's take a look. So you know what, let me hop on the other side. Okay. Oh, Ron Baker. <laughs> All right, so what's going on back here? All right, so we did a little seat modification okay. so we can flip the seats forward. Ah, because these seats are a pain in the ass yep. from the factory, right? So what, you go like that? Ah, that's neat. Yeah, I still lock in place. Oh yeah, here, let me pull out a flashlight quick. And yeah, I'll turn mine on. Oh yeah, look at that. That's clean. How do you like the DMOR amps? Uh, I, I really like them. Um, you know, they're Class D, but they're they're very very clean, no noise whatsoever. Okay. Um, cool. The only what one that a... even runs warm is the the mid bass amp. Okay. What uh, was your uh, biggest challenge with this amp rack? Uh, we had to so that that uh, power slider motor. Mm -hmm. We had to we had to fab a new bracket for that and rotate that motor. 90 degrees to make room for that last amplifier. Oh, ah, I see. All um, right, cool. Yeah, it's all half inch ABS, uh, nut serted to non penetrating points. Yeah. Um, we drilled and tapped every hole in it. All right. Um, Looks pretty good. All right. Thank we you. We also, oh, uh, you got more. so the factory baffles. Yep. Uh, oh, I see. They are right still here. functional. What do, what do you mean factory baffles? The uh, the cab baffles. Oh, okay. So we I built an enclosure around them that's still open in the bottom, oh. and lined it with uh, sound deadening material. Okay. So they're still functional, but they're w way quieter than they were. Oh, I see. Cool. Because you can't you can't delete them. No, you can't. You can't. For multiple reasons, yeah. you know the the whistling in the air conditioner. Plus, you ever have an airbag deployment, it's There's, gonna blow your eardrums out. Yeah, that, I mean, you don't want that, especially considering what we're doing here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, thank you for showing us, and uh, I'll see you out there. Thank All you right. again. Bye bye.